everyone, it's Keely. Um, I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone who has stopped by to watch this video. Um, your support means a lot. Okay, so today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a digital art program called Krita. It's a free art program. You can get it free on their website. Um, I have the link in the bio so that you can go and download a copy for yourself. Um, I personally find it a pretty decent program to use. I've never used another digital art program, so I can't tell you how it compares to others. But for me personally, I um, manage to always get everything done that I need to get done. So I thought I would voice over this video, which is a little different for me, but I thought I would voice over it and explain to you guys what I'm doing a little bit so you have a better idea of um, how I use this program. So what I'm starting out with here was a green sketch that I did. I did each different portion of the sketch on a different layer and then I merged all the layers together. So what you'll see me doing as I add the lines over the top is going back to the original sketch layer and then going over in white over the different sketched portions so that you can no longer see the sketch lines but it's still there if I were to need to make them reappear. Um, it just helps me get a better idea of how all the lines are turning out and to make sure that everything I'm doing is lined up properly and all that good stuff. Um, you guys might have noticed that I really enjoy using the symmetry tool when I am doing digital art. Um, it's really easy, you can find it like up kind of in the center of the screen on the top bar. And I just really like to use it when I'm doing portraits because I enjoy doing really symmetrical looking portraits and it's it makes the work a lot easier. Especially if you're doing something like this that's kind of a quick, sketchy type of thing where you, like for me, this was not meant to be like a perfect finished piece. Not all of the details were supposed to be included here. Um, I just kind of wanted something that was a little fun to do, something to film, you know. So it was not super important to me if all of the lines were perfect, as you can tell here. There are a lot of sketchy lines like in her hair. If I were going to do a complete finished piece, this is not the way I would do hair. Okay. So here you can see I just added the skin tone um, under the facial structure layers. Um, the lips had been erased for the moment because I wanted to go over them. I wanted to experiment with colors a little bit. So instead of choosing a different colored outline to do them in like I had done the rest of the face, I decided to wait and do that to add the, the color of the lips in once I had decided what color I wanted against the tone of the face, if that makes sense. Um, and then here I'm doing eyes. Usually I do not do eyes symmetrically. I usually um, point them one direction or the other, but for this particular piece I did, which was a little unusual for me. I wanted to add extra like rosy hues around her eyes and stuff, so a lot of the time what I'm using here is the airbrush tool to get those really soft pre-blended lines so it's less work for me personally. Um, and then I will also go over the top with the airbrush erase tool so that it will soften the lines even more and I don't have to create harsh lines with just a regular like circle eraser. What you just saw there was me putting in freckles. I used one of my favorite tools to do that. I don't know what it's called, but it's like a the icon's like a little toothbrush and it makes like these really nice like spattered effects. When you get up close it kind of looks like spattered paint, but from far away it looks like freckles. So when I do freckles digitally, that is usually the tool I use. Um, here I'm adding a little bit of depth into her hair with the airbrush tool. And then I usually have the hair be the top layer, so I usually end up having to go around and erase all of this extra stuff like we just saw there. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here, trying to find the right layer. I'm not very organized with my layers. It's really, really a bad habit I need to get figured out. And then here I turned off the symmetry so that I could do the reflections in the eyes. I prefer for them, obviously, to look a little more realistic. So they'll be coming from the same side, which you cannot do with the symmetry tool like this. Um, I played around with reflections on her lips, but I decided I liked the matte look a little bit better. When I do reflections on things like you see here on the necklace, on her eyes, I usually make a completely different layer for all of that so that I can decide if that reflection is good, if I don't like that reflection, so I'm not damaging any of the underneath layers if I decide that I don't want it. I tend to be kind of a, I don't know what you really call it, but I like to use a lot of layers. I don't really like, um, I don't really like building everything on one layer because then I find if there's something I want to change later, it makes it way harder if I haven't made a new layer for it. Um, okay, and then here I'm just making some little flowers. 
Things are really easy to duplicate in this program. You just have to go over to the left of the screen and a couple rows down, you'll see a um, little like square type of box with a circle in the middle. You can adjust, you can resize, you can move all sorts of layers um, with that tool. That's usually what I use during the sketching phases, but I tried not to include the sketch in this particular um, in this particular recording because I thought it might be a little bit boring. It took me a really long time to be happy with this sketch, and then I just kind of threw all the colors on top. Um, and then, let's see, here in just a second you're going to see, yep, that's usually how I do backgrounds because it covers a large area very quickly. I do both lines of symmetry. Um, and then here you'll see me testing out brushes. I tr don't really enjoy my handwriting personally, so I don't tend to write on my art a whole lot, but this one I thought it would be kind of fun because it was meant to be a easier sketchy piece anyway. Thanks for watching!